Good day everyone, good day ma'am. So for today's topic, we are talking about the methods and techniques in many different types of clothing defects. So before we proceed to the discussion, allow me to introduce the members, the CJ Audrey Katakutan, along with just really Badilia, Julian Kabatugan, and Angelica Beninosos. So what is mending? As a recap, mending is the act of repairing clothes with imperfections from being well worn. These imperfections include holes, stains, tears, and missing buttons. Most often, it involves some kind of sewing. So, mending mo na siya gamiton kung imong garment is nabuslot, nagisi, or something na nadamage siya. So, let's proceed to that method and technique for mending clothing defects. So, mending small tears or holes is very easy and adding a patch to cover a large hole or reinforce a worn spot is only a little more difficult. So we have here the first one is the patching large holes. Jeans with torn out knees and shirts with thin elbows are perfect candidates for patching. In fact, any garment with it as spot you can feel will benefit from being patched before it rips. So you need a needle, thread, pins, the torn or worn garment, and a patch. Cut the patch the same shape as but about an inch bigger than the place you're patching it. Then you need to stabilize the hole. Work a whip stitch or blanket stitch around the edges of the hole. Then second is to pin the patch. Center the patch right side out over the damage area and pin it securely. The third one is anchor the damage fabric to the patch using a thread that matches the patch as closely as possible. Turn the edges of the patch. Turn the garment right side out again and pin the patch one edge at a time. Turn the raw edge under one fourth to one and a half inch and pin again before moving to the next edge. The next one is the top stitch the patch. Anchor your thread so the tail is hidden and work a small running stitch or slip stitch all the way around the edges of the patch. Be sure to catch the garment fabric underneath. Whatever your sewing project, always anchor your thread before you starting a seam. Second is mending small tears and holes. For the sort of tears you get from snugging a sleeve on barbed wire, arrows, torn, you only need to stabilize the edges and reconnect the fabric. You will need a needle and thread and if you want to use pins, you can. First, we have to stabilize the edges. Ibalance ang edges sa usaka garment. The second is close the tear. Pass the needle up to the front, then down to the tear and back up through the opposite side of the tear. Keep working this way until you reach the end of the tear. If ganang kanga itago ang repair, kana di siya makita ang tinahian, turn the garment inside out and turn the very edges of the tear inward or toward you. The third one is hemming jeans. Hemming jeans is fairly easy and you don't even have to take the existing hem part to do it. While well, you can sew the name and other every fabric by hand, it's faster and easier on your hand to use the machine. If you do decide to hand sew, use a heavy needle and chin thread and protect the finger that pushes the needle through the fabric with a thimble. Either way, you need pins and a measuring tape for this project. First, we have the measure and mark. Put the jeans you want to hem on inside out. Fill on them To do it yourself, measure the length of the inseam and outseam on your jeans and then on yourself and fold up enough fabric to make the measurement match. Second is to sew the new seam. Ipil on ang existing hem ok tayi on. Then the third one is trim and finish the new seam. Trim the exists fabric away, leaving between 1 fourth and 1 half inch seam allowance and finish the cut edges with a zigzag stitch or blanket stitch. Fourth is sewing on the bottom. Reattaching bottom is one of the simplest repairs you can make to extend the life of the garment. You need a needle, thread, pins, and of course the bottom. First, mark the location of the bottom. Put two pins through the fabric, making an X right over the spot where the thread passes through. Then slip the worn threads. Second is anchor the thread. Take a few tiny stitches through the fabric. You can trim the tail later. Not tend to pull through fabric eventually and then the bottom loose again. Third is attach the bottom. Stitch several times through the bottom, passing your needle through the fabric each time as close to the same points as possible. Leave the pins in a place as you sew to space the bottom slightly away from the fabric. Create a thread shock. When you finish stitching on the bottom, you can remove the marking pins and stitch through to the back of the fabric and tie off your thread by taking a small stitch and passing the needle through the loop twice, pulling it tight. Then snip the thread tail. Then I'll give it to Miss Kabanto again for a discussion about the basic types of garment defects. So, the topic is basic types of garment defects. But before that, I want you to know that please bear with me. It is because I can't open my mouth. Well, it is because I'm having a toothache and I can't open my mouth. 
widely because it will hurt in this portion. So let's go back to the topic. So uh, the first types of garment defects is that the untrimmed threads. So untrimmed threads are generally considered a minor defect. However, they can become a more serious issue if found in a significant portion of the order. This has cause and remedies. So, untrimmed threads are one of the easiest defects to rectify. The manufacturer making the clothing needs to be more vigilant while finishing and packing. Trimming any excess threads before goods are packed and shipped. The second type of garment defects is the broken or skipped stitching. Broken or skipped stitches are usually a fault with the sewing machine, quality of thread being used or the work. So the cause and remedies are broken stitching can be caused by rough handling or poor quality of thread. And stitch issues are generally considered a minor defect but can be major if the issue is evident on a high percentage of the order or in a highly visible area of the garment. So, ma major gini siya if maklaro na gano ang issue. And, if broken or skipped stitches are found during inspection of garments, these need to be brought to the supplier's attention. So, the third busy type of garment defect is the puckering. Puckering is an irregular seam surface. You see this garment defect more commonly in a woven fabrics and knitted ones. Puckering is especially is especially prominent on garments that are tightly woven. So dito ni mo makita kung makakaiban tama nga nagkunut kunut na ganda pa sa tinahian mo na siya ang puckering. And the cause and remedies is the fabrics characteristics can cause puckering. However, more commonly it is related to one of the following workmanship issues. So first is a high or tight thread tension during sewing causing the fabric to bunch or pucker. So, katong tinayan, you know, nga, or kunot, kunot naging siya. And, one ply of fabric feeds into the sewing machine at a different rate than other plies. One cause of puckering is the type of fabric itself. Robust fabrics like lining and cotton do need to nat naturally pucker. But some lightweight materials like nylon or silk are far more likely to rock up in the sewing machine. Tightly woven fabrics are also more likely to pucker. For so for our uh, my advice is for a beginner sewer or if you need to work fast, try a fabric that won't gather as much as others for your projects. If you're not sure when choosing a fabric, the slippery thin materials are the ones to avoid. Tight woven fabrics like canvas can also pucker, is pucker easily. So the fourth basic types of garment effects and a needle damage. Needle damage is usually more common in knitted fabric. However, it can occur in woven fabric as well. Needle damage is found on the seams and presents in the form of holes where the needle or thread enters the fabric and more commonly found after the garment is washed. Needle cuts are a recurring problem in many apparel sewing plants and unfortunately there's little that can be done to remove them. Once the garment is in the consumer's hands, the needle cuts can take an even more destructive route turning into long runs. So just what causes these insidious little effects and how can they be avoided? So needle cuts occur when the point of the needle penetrates the fabric and severs the fiber, severs the fiber uh, structure creating a hole or run 
So while neither of damage can be caused by friction, it is generally caused by incorrect needle type being used or a blunt damage needle. So friction or heat can cause damage as machinist needs to slow down, adjust the needle size and or shape, change the needles regularly to stay sharp and in working order, ensure needles remain clean and clear of damage, and lastly, ensure the sewing machine is well oiled or lubricated so let's have angelica venenoso for the next report thank you miss jolene kabantukan for a great explanation about basic types of garment effects now i will be discussing about the different types of stitches basically we have nine basic sewing stitches but before we tackle about it Let's first know what is a hand stitch. Hand stitches are very much useful even when you've got the best sewing machine. There are different types of temporary stitches and permanent stitches by hand. Sometimes in urgency and sometimes for the better look of the garment such as seaming stitches which might not work well on a sewing machine. Then comes the use of different types of stitches by hand. The various types of hand stitches are used for a variety of purposes such as stitching seams, overcast heavy garments, etc. Now, let's get into the basic types of hand stitches. First, straight or running stitch. The running stitch or straight stitch is the most basic of the hand sewing stitches. It has many variations according to the requirement. Its uses include gathering, mending, and tucking. For its procedure, we have first insert your threaded needle from the wrong side upwards. Second, insert down into the fabric according to the mark design. Third, bring the thread back up and repeat. For the second basic type of stitches, we have pasting or tucking. It is the same as the running stitch but with longer stitches between 1 fourth and 1 half inches. You can do it straight also instead of a slanting as in running stitch. So its uses include tucking, holding seam and also it can be used as a temporary stitch. For its procedure, first, pierce your thread needle from the wrong side upwards. Second, according to the mark design, pierce it down into the fabric with longer stitches up to 1 foot inch to 1 half inch. Third, bring the thread back up and repeat. For the third basic hand stitch, we have back stitch. It is a hand sewn back stitch with a strong reliable stitch before sewing machines all clothes were built by layer upon layer of back stitches so its uses include attached fabrics outline shapes from embroidery designs and writing for its procedure first working from left to right take a small stitch second insert the needle at the end of the previous stitch bringing it out beyond the point where the thread emerges for the third Continue and always insert the needle at the end of the previous stitch. For the first basic hand stitch, we have catch stitch or cross stitch. You can use this stitch to finish hems with fabric that doesn't fray and to tuck facing invisibly. Its uses include item, seam allowances, and living garments. For its procedure, we have first Working from left to right, take tiny stitches on the hem. Second, take a tiny stitch on the garment. They will appear as crosses on the wrong side and small stitches on the right. Slip stitch or blind stitch. This is the most used stitch for the hems and other finishes. It's almost invisible and clean when it's done right. Its uses include join two pieces with stitch thread being invisible and hem. The procedure, first, bring the needle through the fold of the hem. Second, pick up a thread of fabric at the same point. Third, 
make the stitches about a one half inch apart and fairly loose a uh, slip stitch is a common hem stitch and it's used when you don't want visible stitches for the sixth type of hand stitch we have blanket stitch or buttonhole stitch if you want to sew eyelets or buttonholes by hand learn the buttonhole stitch the uses of blanket stitch include enclosed the raw edges of heavy fabrics and decorative stitch for its procedure first secure the thread on the wrong side of the fabric insert the needle from back to front through the fabric one inch from the edge second wrap the working head around behind the eye end of a needle then behind the point pull the needle through bringing the knot to the fabric edge fourth continue making closely spaced stitches and dots the eyelet version is worked in a circle with a wrapped edge to the invisible the blanket stitch variation has at least a 1 foot inch spacing between stitches. For the seventh type of hand stitch, we have fell stitch. Fell stitch is known for applique stitch, which is one layer of fabrics, generally a folded or salvage stitch that is a stitch to another. It's quick, strong, and flexible. We're in the piece soon on without a fell stitch can move somewhat like a hinge and that makes it good for installing linings its uses include applique steam um so loose either applique or applique seams millinery work and clothing such as attaching hat bodies to bring and attach hat buds to hats the stitches themselves typically sit 90 degrees to the edge or they can be angled slightly for its procedure First, emerge on the folded edge. The stitch should be about 1 mm away from the fold. Second, insert the needle directly into the fabric next to the fold. Third, run it diagonally so that it emerges beyond the first stitch. Fourth and last, pull the stitch closed. For the tip, sew the stitches between 1 8 to 1 4 inch apart. For the eighth basic hand stitch, we have overcast stitch. It is one of several types of hand stitches. The purpose is to prevent the unraveling of the fabric. Its use include enclosed raw edges of a fabric. So for the last type of basic hand stitch, we have whip stitch. It is a simple stitch used in both sewing and crocheting. Its uses include quilting, applique making, closing the size of pillows and cushion, making jeans garments, and hemming the sides of garments. It is usually used to sew together two separate pieces of material with the flat edges in both practices. When used on crocheted works, the whip stitch is not invisible. For sewn works, the stitch is more visible but can be marked. So there will be many times when a hand stitch does your work than a sewing machine. I hope these basic types of hand stitches help you get through the situations early and I hope you learn something from it. Now, I will give the floor to Ms. Drea Audrey Katakutan to tackle about the basic machine operations. Okay, let's proceed to the basic machine operations. So these are the parts of sewing machine. How does the machine work? A sewing machine takes thread from two sources, the spool and the bobbin, and weaves them together as the needle goes through the material. So ang spool o ang bobbin importante magjuna sa sa part of the machine kay kumula ang spool. Dili jud siya malig on apag tahi. Lahi ira sa kamot ba kay ang kamot kay usa na magjuka thread anong gamiton. So ang kuan ang machine dapat na apo kay thread para sa ibutang si Musa spool o ang bobbin para sa ibutang sa ubos. So we have here the steps on how operating the sewing machines. Step 1 is winding the bobbin. Winding the bobbin is always your first test. Provide the source for the bottom thread in the sewing process. So muna siya, um, importante kina siya o dapat mo yun na i-priority ni mo when it's setting up of sewing machine. O na po kay tahi on. 
first is to place your thread in a spool holder and look for markings for threading the bobbin. Most machines have some basic guides for where your thread goes. Second is hook the thread around the bobbin while in tensioner. Thread it through the top hole in your bobbin, whichever side you're holding up. And that is, and push the bobbin onto the bobbin winder. Push the bobbin winder to the right from sewing position into winding position. The third is, while holding the thread that drew your bobbin up with some tension, slowly press down on the pedal and the bobbin should start winding. You may need to guide the thread a bit so that it spreads evenly on the bobbin and let it go until you filled it or got in enough thread for your project. The bobbin thread directly followed your line, so you need a little more than 10 feet if you're sewing a 10 feet length of fabric. Third, while holding the thread that's drew your bobbin up with some tension, slowly press down on the pedal and the bobbin should start winding. You may need to guide the thread a bit so that it spreads evenly on the bobbin and let it go until you feel this or get enough thread for your project. The bobbin thread directly follows your line, so you need a little more than 10 feet if you're sewing a 10 feet length of fabric. And the last one is cut the thread, remove the bobbin, and push the bobbin winder back to the sewing position. Step 2 is threading the needle. Again, most sewing machines have diagrams and arrows stamped on the casing that show you where the thread should go. Hook the thread from the spool holder. Follow the arrows to loop it under the lower guide, then back up through the thread take-up lever. To cycle up the thread take-up lever in order to hook it, turn the hand wheel on the right side of the sewing machine towards you. Then hook the thread through the lower thread guide above the needle. Then thread the needle. Thread cut with decent scissors is generally pretty easy to get through the eye of the needle, but if you have trouble, you can use a needle threader. Step 3. Threading the bobbin. On the inside of the bobbin compartment are instructions on threading it, but this is the process that most people are scared of. Put the small lever on the bobbin holder out and remove it from the bobbin compartment. Second is position your bobbin as pictured in a diagram with a thread direction to the right and slide it through the slot. Third is gently slide the thread back along the groove and until it comes out in the space near the lever-like thread guide. Fourth, with the thread to the left of the guide, place the bobbin holder back into the position. Make sure you have at least 6 inches of extra thread coming out from the bobbin. Fifth is gently turn the manual wheels toward you. Watch as the needle goes below the needle plate and the thread is picked up and loop around the bobbin holder. It should sweep up the bobbin thread and bring it in a loop back up above the needle plate. And the last one is sweep your scissors under the pressure foot to bring out the bobbin thread and the main thread to the left of the foot assembly as shown and close the bobbin compartment and now you're ready to sew. So the last step for making your seam. Depending on your pattern or lock thereof, you may have pin your pieces together or you may be pinching them together for dear life and adjusting on the fly. So first, stitch type. There are many types of stitches, but you can put most things with a straight stitch or zigzag stitches. Second is tension. This can be a touchy issue and some machines are tougher than others to properly adjust. The upper thread tension is controlled by the tension dial and the bobbin thread tension can be adjusted with a small screw on the bobbin holder. Third is place your two pieces of fabric together and slide them under the pressure foot to your starting point. Lower the pressure foot, gently press down on the foot pedal to start sewing. So, imotong tumban aron mag andar na siya. Then, to knot the beginning and end of seams after a few stitches, hold down the reverse stitch lever to go back a few forwards of few, then back a few again before heating off your seam. Six is to knot the beginning and end of seams. After a few stitches, hold down the reverse stitch lever to go back a few before heading off on your seam. Then adjust your speed to your comfort with a foot pedal so you can control the fabric as it passes. So ayon lang yung paspasi o tunog kay aron dili porma paspas ang pag tahi sa machine. Then do another knot at the end. Make sure the needle is out of the fabric. Raise the presser foot, slide out your piece, and leave a tail of thread for the machine, and you're done. So, umani mong tahi is dapat yung kang magbilin yung kag kanang ikog ikog sa hilo kay aron po nga dili po siya alanganin ba o na siya so that will be my part i hope you can learn something from it knowing the methods or steps 
in operating sewing machine is very important man jud kay labi na nga applicable kini siya magamit jud ni kayo siya in the future nga ganahan ka magnegosyo og pananahi then let's have Mr. Liberdilia to talk about the tips in caring for garment condition so good morning ma'am good morning everyone um, so let's continue the discussion um, with our topic so now we're going here uh, tips in carrying garments conditions. So we have here number one, wash less. So naingon si Chris Morton nga think twice before washing your clothes. So washing garments too often can actually cause damage to the fibers and hence decrease the lifespan, which is very true. Tungod guy, um, if we often wash our clothes, man good. Um, there are some tendencies nga mag color fading na siya. Masab ang yung color. So Ayun siya nga, uh, it's better nga, ato, dili ta sige mang laba. So, it's advisable nga, kung dili pa kayo hugo imuhang clothes, pwede pa gudgay na nimo magamit sunod mga adlaw. So, next we have the wash low, washed at low temperatures. So, when times does come to, to do a clothes wash, wash at the lower temperatures. Wash clothes at the low temperatures with a gentle or natural laundry detergent to keep the public clean and soft and to prevent color fading. So, kinanglan po sa itong pag-wash, kinanglan mamili ito mga detergent, nga dili po siya isog kayo because there are some detergent na grabe na lang po siya kaisog which is mga po yung sakarazon na mag-color fading po ang ato mga clots. No? More especially, yung si Morton, gamit ka og mga washing machine. So, he advises na um, washing ko no sa clots kay gamit ragid ko no kag 30 degrees Celsius or it helps, or it helps yes, to those emissions that protect your clothes. So another one is, kanyang gitawag na to, pay attention to care labels. So, ingon si Morton, it is important to properly care for delicate fabrics, such as cashmere and silk, where are particularly vulnerable to damage by harsh, chemical, and heat. So, gidugangan pa ni Morton, ingon siya nga, Pay careful attention to instructions on the label. So, na ay mga label, di ba? Invite na to. May mga label ang itong mga clots. So, dapat daw kay ito daw ng sahon. Aron, aron, aron minded ta and guided ta. And the advices that when maximum recommended temperature items should be washed at other recommended temperature unless the label says dry only. No? Clean, dry only. I mean. So another one is can in cut down on the cut down on dry cleaning. So also when in cut down on dry cleaning. So um um one of the three consumers avoid buying garment that says dry only the label and then thanks to the extra effort. So so I'm gonna talk about cut down on dry cleaning. So dapat kinahanglan nga laundry skills of economy. Kinahanglan nga atong i avoid buying um, special special wash and special dry drying clothes. Um, avoid buying clothing that requires iron iron uh, ironing <laughs> ironing. Next is avoid buying colors that will bled. No, and then another one is don't separate light and dark except white. So hold baths with special wash items. So. Color down or color down or dry cleaning, cut down and dry cleaning. So another one is kaningitawag na to use eco laundry powders and detergent. Um, standard detergent can contain fo fossil fuel based substances which have the negative effects on the environment as they uh, don't biodegrade. So using specialist laundry product like a range of eco washes and delicate hand wash can also go a long way to making your most treasured items last longer. Ingon si Chris. And then, there are now growing number of eco laundry products that are made from biodegradable and it's plant derived ingredient and which also have the added bonus of being reliable. So for example, um, can you cover the methods of offer cleaning products made mostly of natural plant-based ingredients and come into 100% post consumer recyclable plastic bottles while clothes um new range of clothes wash product and the cell 
and everybody was are made from the plant-based ingredients that nourish delicate fibers and arrive from recovery. So naabi ay mga laundry rin nga kanang nahimo na nga gamit ang mga plants, no? O sa sa mga raw materials kay ang mga plants. So um pwede na nato siya gamiton kay kanang we often use dili ato gamiton mostly labi na kay kanang tag-as or I think I mean kanang makadaot siya sa ato ang di siya eco-friendly in a short word, no? Next is kaning washing inside out. Wash inside out. An extra handy tips to wash clothes inside out when machine washing and to avoid overfilling as this can cause friction and damage the fibers. So ingon si pa, ingon si ing si Chris nga extra handy tips is wash clothes inside out when machine washing. Para ma-avoid na tong overfilling no kan over the feeling and mamugod siya maka cost of mga damages sa ato ang uh, fibers so another one is air dry sa mining air dry air dry there is there's nothing um i mean there's nothing like that um pers um laundered no laundered then then air dried smell when you get your clean clothes uh from washing line and not only does smell great, air dry is also better for the clothes. Planet compared tumble drying, washing your energy from the run can cause damage certain fibers. So kaning air dry, kana bang bot sabot niya kanang pudi biya tamag kanang kanang atong atong clothes kaya pudi na to pa ogon rap gamit ng washing machine. So mas better ng air dry siya kaya rong nindot, no? Nindot siya. Tatang ihanger gid ba? No kanang hangin gid mo yung magugas. So nindot siya. Kay it it's it's smell good, no? And then dili pod siya kanang kanang makadaot sa imo nga clothes. So another one is kaning store properly. Store properly correct storage can really prolong the lifespan of garment. So kana sakto nga imo ang pagstore sa imo nga um gamit can really um help the lifespan of your garment. Ingon si Chris so, store all clothes in a cool and dry space to protect them from damp, sunlight, and heat, which can cause damage. Make sure clothes can clean before storage. So, lain pa gaayunog atong hiposo na ato ang clothes na hugaw, baho, manimaho, mambuna, matakod na stanan. So, dapat store properly. So, next is this one. Repair damage. So, repair damage is... Uh, repair damage, repair any damage to garment when you first notice it. Advices, yung si Chris. So, this will not only keep the item out in landfill and wearable state, but increase the lifespan of the, the item and damage will likely get worse over time and then resolves. So, ano siya nga, you can, uh, you can also repress the, res the restore item to keep looking their best. So, for example, um, depiling the jumper, um, you've worn every day, then red rating and that laundry jacket, then become crack over time and preserve them to keep their bull condition. So, ano bang si Ike, nagisi na hinoon, no? Dapat, ato siyang i-repair dayon, na i-repair na ito itong damaged. Why? Because, um, kung di mo na tag doon, maabot ang kalaay, so, mahibun nun na strapo. So, yung business nindot ponta, magamit, gamay ponta ang daot, so maguba. So last one is kanang kita wag na tawag alter to fit refresh the last time. So many people no longer wear their favorite item because it's no longer fits them. So it's correct. Tungod kay dili biya constant ang ato ang body no. Nagtubo beta. So ato mga nindot sa una di na nato maraang karon. So um or because they longer last the style so Ingon si Chris, kay usa sa mga rason ba sig di na pod taganan ato nga mga style. So a simple alteration like taking it at the worst of shorting a full length dress into a mix of short that can give what feels like new outfit and also keep old favorites updates with the latest style. So dapat um latest no um ma refresh ang ato ang kanang mga hilig ba no sa mga trending nga mga style and we should go all uh, atong go to the, the, the flow. Kaya nga si Chris nga, sa mga before, natin mga favorites nga mga color, different mga styles, but hindi um, na nato raang. So, 
pwede na atong uh, magamit karon sa mga style. Pwede ta mo go sa atong mga style sa mga updated with the latest style. So, I think that would be all and that ends our discussion. Thank you so much for listening and I hope that you learned something a lot from us. Thank you and God bless everybody.